Well, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope that you all <clears throat> are having a good morning so far this morning. Um, I want to do something a little bit different this week. Um, I have been trying to get into people's skins as much as I can as far as trying to be where you are uh, and give you some ways to frame what's happening and ways to think about and to pray about what's happening. But this morning I woke up thinking um, this is a day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are um, now two Sundays past into the, the season of Easter which is the best news that humanity has ever received. And so we, um, we have reason to rejoice. Uh, we have reason to thank God for our many blessings and be grateful. So this morning I want to start, I'm starting a series. You know how I love to do series, not really. But I want to start out this morning by giving you a little, um, a little taste of the blessings in our gospel writer, whoops, sorry, our gospel writer for <clears throat> for this year is Matthew. And even though we kind of move over into John with a little smattering of Luke for the Easter season, Matthew is predominantly our gospel. So <clears throat> I wanted to read a little bit of a very familiar passage. This is the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. It's in Matthew 5, and it's what's known as the Beatitudes. And I always have to laugh when I say that out loud because I remember way back when when a man said to me, Pastor Susan, if these are the B attitudes, what are the A attitudes? So maybe this week we'll be looking at some of the A attitudes that go with the B attitudes. This is from Matthew in the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is the reading that I wanted to share with you this morning. And so many times as I read that, I was thinking of people, especially this morning, we grieve with Harry Goodwin on the loss of his father and with Brenda Crossfield on the loss of her mother yesterday. So we have people around us who are dealing with way, way, way more than we are dealing with. So it is a good morning for us to be grateful and to think about things that we are grateful for. Um, the Beatitudes themselves were written kind of to set the tone um, for Matthew. This is one of the things that, that immediately follows. I mean, he has gone into the wilderness with his temptation. He has started to gather his disciples. This is really the first teaching in Matthew. And it is kind of a paradigm um, for Judaism, which is interesting to me because I think in modern day Judaism, unless you really know, if you have neighbors or people that you know well, um, I don't know that I would make this statement, but this is this is really true in, in Jesus' time when we don't know much about the Jewish faith. Um, Judaism was predicated on grace, just the way our Lutheran faith is predicated on grace. And our Christian faith is predicated on grace. So we always, I think people think of us as being so different because of the Jesus event. And yet the doctrines and the ways of life and everything for people who were ethnically Jewish and, and religiously Jewish were not that far as far as their really, uh, their, their core, their North Star was it literally to do unto others and to, you know, the care for the community and care for the tribe. 
uh, th that no one would go without. Um, that is the very best of the Christian walk. So um, just keep that in mind. And so when he's talking to these people who um, pretty much his original audience were day workers and slaves and people who had no ownership in anything. These were the, the small people. And this morning as I was reading this before we started, I was thinking this is the group um, of of the people who stock the grocery shelves and the farm workers and um, the, the guys who sweep up at the hospital and, you know, all those people that we are now so dependent on um, were the ones who followed Jesus in huge crowds. And it was because this section, this Beatitudes, for the first time ever, as Rome continued to put their thumb down on on, on Judea and and um, these were the people who had nothing. These are the people who were the the valueless of society. So to hear Jesus start out his teaching by saying, "Hey, all of you got nothing. You are blessed." And they must have sat there and you know thought, "Who is this guy and where is he going with this?" Because uh, we've never been blessed ever. So. Uh, so think about that, and I want to kind of try to touch this week on some of those places where um, we might not feel blessed, but that we truly are blessed. So that's going to be the theme this week, and um, and I hope that that will will inspire you and and uh, and help you to kind of just soak up your days and and uh, and live in a wonderful way. Many of you know, um, years and years ago, I wrote a book on blessings. And that, over the years, has continued to be a blessing to me. I mean, I, I think it went out of print <laughs> shortly after it was published. Uh, but it was a collection of blessings, which included a lot of the things that I do at Advent, the blessing of babies in the womb, blessing of backpacks, blessing of this, that, or the other thing. Um, the face stepping stone blessings were part of that. Um, but blessings has always been kind of a big part of my life, and so when the book came out, people started to send me things that they had created. I uh, said, oh, look at this, or what about this? The, you know, this is, this is one that I've been doing, or this is one that I've been using. And um, our own Miss Melva Anderson, who, who lives a life of blessing um, and shares it so graciously and so freely with all of us, with her beautiful decor in the church and so many wonderful things as she leads angels and those kinds of things, um, gave me this a long time ago. And I she hand wrote it. I don't know if it was original to her or, um, or if she had found it someplace to share. But I think this is absolutely amazingly wonderful. And I thought, this is the way I want to start the week. And I, I know some of you are really into little morning rituals. Um, if you're up at this time of the morning to watch me on, on the internet, then yeah, I know you're kind of ritual people. But here's another way to start your day. And I don't know that I've ever talked about this, but this little thing was tucked away in my Bible, actually, where the Beatitudes start. And it's the practice of using a blessing bowl now, this is not a prayer bowl. We'll talk about that later. But today, I want to introduce this idea to you of a blessing bowl. And the idea is that it can be a reminder to live in gratitude, to appreciate your life and all that life sends your way. All that life sends your way. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And the idea is that you take it all in and let it all go every day. So here's the idea. I have some props with me this morning, but you can do your own and I hope you will enjoy this. Um, find a bowl, find some kind of little bowl or container. This little bowl is special to me because it was one that I bought at some cheapo market uh, by the dozens for Pastor Rogers and my wedding at the seminary and we put little blue votive candles in these because uh, blue is one of our colors. And so I have a number of these left, but um, this is, so this is a special bowl for me. So pick a bowl, pick some kind of receptacle. And then in the morning, you're going to fill the bowl.
fill the bowl as you think about um, opening up yourself to all of the possibilities of the day, that the blessings that will come your way and all of the possibilities of the day. And this is kind of similar to doing the examine where you think about what you might be doing uh, today and what might be uh, something that would be a wonderful thing and some that you maybe not be looking forward to. But then throughout the day, have it in a prominent place to remind you of all the possibilities and all the blessings that you have. And then at the day's end, maybe after dinner or before you go to bed, um, you take the bowl, you can take it outside or you can use it on a plant in your home. Um, and pour the water out. It feed the plant, uh, water the plant with the water from the bowl. But as you pour it out, release back to the world um, some of the blessings that were bestowed on you th th this, on this day. You can say them out loud. You can just, um, as our Native American brothers and sisters do, just um, tell the tree or the plant or the whatever that... Um, you know, this is, this is your day and you're sharing your day as it goes back to the earth uh, with all the blessings, with all the craziness, with all the anxieties and the fears, uh, pour it out. So that is the practice of the blessing bowl. And I hope maybe some of you might want to try doing that. I'd love to hear how that goes for you. Sometimes I think we want to fill the bowl in the morning and dump it out right away because we've got stuff we need to do that we don't want to face. And so we might want to just fill it up with all of our anxieties and things and dump it out and then start again with the bowl that will hold um, all of the blessings and all of the stuff of our day that can be poured out before we go to bed. So blessings on your day. I hope that you have a wonderful one. I hope that your bowl is full of blessings and of gratitude and of all the wonderful things that will come your way as we, as we go through uh, the next 24 hours and until we are with each other again. Thanks for joining me and um, go outside. At some point, I'm looking out my window. It looks pretty gray, but at some point, they promise the sun will peak out today. So enjoy your day and give it to God, and be blessed. See you tomorrow. Have a great one.